That's the place to be, and here's Logan Beal. A lot of conversation. You know, everything's behind a paywall these days. I know a lot of college baseball fans were excited to have their buffet of nine games here at Minute Maid available. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty healthy buffet, too. <laughs> Some great teams. Obviously, uh, Louisville comes in 14th, a &M ranked, TCU ranked 15th. And a couple of rebuilding programs in Rice and Michigan, but you know, great competition throughout the weekend. And well, that ball's drilled to the gap off the bat of Beard. It's going to get down and go to the fence. Nunez is going to have to chase. Plays the Karen well off the bullpen. That's going to keep Beard at second with a leadoff double. And a big time swing by Logan Beard. Second inning in a row. The Cardinals have had their leadoff man on, this time in the form of a double. And just a couple of mistake pitches by Cole Klecker, but. Louisville has taken advantage and jumped all over those pitches out over the plate. We're going there for Logan Beard. We started talking about Klecker and how he had thrown eight and a third innings, so now he's up to 11 and a third. He has still not walked a batter this season. But he's going to try and pick here. Close it out. Wow. That's the second time the Cardinals have lost a base runner. A caught stealing now a pickoff. Each team has had a runner picked off. Well, just tremendous execution here by Klecker. And you saw Braden Taylor just sneak in, flash that glove, gave him leather, and great spin. And a quick pickoff move by Klecker to retire Beard. You can see Beard with that big hop, and he was in no man's land once he did that. Front try by Keelan. Is he going to get a second hit? Yes, he is. Infield base hit of the second and bunt hit in the fourth. You go back to that second inning when Louisville had three straight hits to start the frame, but they lost a runner and weren't able to score. They're hoping that doesn't repeat itself here. That's it. Isaac Country was erased on that great scoop and tag by Richardson. And, and just like we saw right after that occurred, you know, the Cardinals put together a couple more hits. That would have resulted in a run back in the second. And now possibly losing another run here in the fourth. This is Hawkins. He's going to bunt up and over the head of the catcher, Bowen. When you look at the, uh, the biggest question mark, I think, coming into the season for TCU is, you know, you lose 40 starts last year from guys like Cornelio and Probe, Perez, Brett Walker. And this is a lot of innings to replace. And, so they have found a, a legitimate Friday night guy. We saw Ryan Vander High yesterday. He threw a gem. And now Cole Clifford getting a shot. Of course, Cam Brown, we expect to see him possibly tomorrow. But this just rebuilding that entire rotation for TCU. Hawkins will take one at the belt for a called strike. You have all the workouts in the fall and the scrimmages, and you have some of the scrimmages when you get back after the first of the year, inner squad stuff. Might have an idea what you have, but you're still anxious to see how it plays out. Well, yeah, and it's again crossing these white lines when the lights go on. How's it going to play out? Almost snuck into the booth, didn't it? Try. Yeah, that's the. Uh, Continuous feedback we get from these coaches that come to the Shriners Classic is, hey, not only is it a great tournament, a lot of talent here accumulated, but we get to find out more about our team. It's a wave of the miss. Hawkins down on strike, second out of the end. Sure do. And obviously the uniqueness is facing three different teams. You may have a weekend series go on the road, and you may be tested, but playing three different teams really does force you to game plan and get together those scouting reports and have everything ready. Yeah, it's really hard to prepare for something like this. And as you mentioned, you get typical weekenders, you're going to play a team three times. And, and once you get prepared for the first one, well, you know, you know what to expect, you know, games two and three. Maybe shuffle the lineup a little bit, but say your bullpen plays out. But, yeah, much more difficult when you're facing three different teams on three different days. Klein line to left this last time in. It was a great play by Boyers. He found the padding 
on the Crawford boxes between the scoreboards, the National and American Leagues. Had a softer landing once he made a catch that saved a run, if not more. And the good news was when he hit the wall, it was against that padding up in left center, or left field. There's a much of that scoreboard here that's unpadded, and that can create some different types of bruising. Sure can, in addition to some crazy bounces. Strange kicks or angles off the fence. Flecker to Klein. There's another one down the line, bending towards the seats. This will be out of play. Someone got that baseball without too much drama. Yeah, I don't know if this is the fastest outfield in college baseball, but got to be darn near it. All three of these players, Boyers, Nunez, and Davis, just cracked the ball down. It's a luxury, there's no doubt. Klein really battled back in the second against Klecker. Behind in the count here, nothing in two. Drill to left center field. That's down. It's going to go to the bullpen. Let's see if Keelan might be able to score. Here he comes. Here's the throw to the play. He saved the ball. Was dropped by Bowen. A perfect relay. The Carson Bowen could not hold on. And Keelan scores from first. Wow. He was dead to rights at home. Was Keelan. Outstanding play off that left field, just carried directly to Boyers. And in the throw to Braden Taylor, Taylor to Carson Bowen, had him out by a mile. And the contact looked like it knocked the ball out. Yeah, it was the shoulder of Keelan, hit directly on that glove, and looked like Bowen had both his hand inside the glove to protect it, but just that hard slide knocks it loose. And it results in the third Cardinal run. Hey, that's gonna be an E2, so no RBI, a double, but a D2 on the drop. That one fouled back and out of play by the leadoff hitter, Natchez. Well, Klein may have felt like he was robbed in the second. He, <laughs> he wants the double. <laughs> he doesn't get the RBI, but his team is now leading 3-0. Well, it's a great at bat for Matt Klein. He's put a couple of them together in a row. That time gets rewarded and heads over on a third. Heads up base running when that play at home occurred. Check off at it. Did he? Yes, he did on the appeal. Michael Durante says swing, strike, nothing in two. Well, now going back, you think, Brett, that you know the Cardinals lost a run in the second on that pickoff on the steal attempt. They lost a run here sure on, the, on the pickoff. So that's two extra runs they left on the board, off the board. Foot race to the base. Flecker will take it, beat Snapchick, that ends the inning, but uh, Cardinals get a run pack, crazy play at the plate. Yeah, great job, great defense by TCU, but uh, just couldn't execute that last piece of it. A great slide by Keelan, and a 3-0 lead for the Cardinals. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. Joe? Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. I think the crowd fades away, but, um, you know, your energy alone and crowd's energy is infectious, so it's hard not to feed off of that. You don't hear the crowd too much. You can hear it, but, like, if it's live ball, like, you score and the crowd's going crazy, you might not hear it as much because you're worried about getting back on defense, but, like, if there's, like, a big dunk and then they call a timeout, oh, yeah, that crowd is going to be roaring. It's the Modern fan deserves modern solutions. No, not interdimensional teleportation, although that would be cool. I'm talking about watching your favorite teams everywhere, wherever you go. Make it happen with the AT&T Sportsnet mobile app and never miss a moment. Just download from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and it's go time. The AT&T Sportsnet mobile app, literally putting the game in your hands. And we'll look into that teleportation thing. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I mean, that is beautiful basketball. This music has me feeling 
inspired. Wow, I'm feeling like anything is possible after that. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up with the participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of a Shriners Children's Hospital. Go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. Frogs have some work to do. Down 3 nothing. Byrne will lead off against Ferrone, who has retired six straight. The last batter who reached, he actually struck him out, and it was... And air on the catcher, Klein throwing down yeah, the first. That's uh, really could go, you know, towards eight straight without that play. But well, good news for the Frogs. It could be worse. It could be five nothing. You're right. Great defense. My TCU has kept this lead to three. They're very much in it, but uh, exactly right. Having some problems getting going against this guy, Greg Ferrone. He has been outstanding for Louisville. His disposition, his countenance is pretty calm. I mean, there's not a lot going on for a left-hander. Just kind of stands, gets his sign, goes to work. Been economical in his pitch count. Yeah, outside of the two walks to Davis and Byrne in the first. He had that uh, hit by Elijah Nunez to start the game. Outside of that, he's been perfect. Here's a payoff. That strike three over the inside corner. Byrne down looking. Ferrone gets the K. One gone. Yeah, it wasn't framed up real well by Matt Klein, but uh, that ball had some carry to the inside against Byrne. And no argument from Curtis Byrne. Just a tough pitch to catch. And Ferrone to Klein. Five strikeouts. That brings up Richardson. Grounded went sharply to short with a couple of runners on base that ended the first. Lines one to the leaping Keelan at second base. Well, his second time in two at bats, Trey Richardson has hit the ball hard and nothing to show for it. Perfectly timed leap by Keelan. That ball might have kept on climbing and it yeah. cleared Keelan. Would have been an easy double had it got by him. Here's Bishop. Here's the hitter who struck out but reached on an E2 when Klein bounced to throw to first. Watch that pitch just sweep in for a strike over the outside corner. Yeah, 50 pitches in, 30 strikes. For Ferrone. Ball to strike ratio. Nasty break, nothing in two. That is a big curveball. Not quite 12 to 6, more like the 11 to 5, but that's got a lot of downward tilt to it. Here's the 0-2. That's up and in. Fox have just that one hit. working comfortably today. Just cruises through the heart of the lineup in the bottom of the fourth with a couple of Ks. We played four innings. Three nothing. Loop. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. Childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. 2022 World Series Champion! It's one thing to reach the pinnacle, and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now, let's cement the dynasty. We're ready.
puts a 3-0 Louisville lead over TCU as we go to the top of the fifth inning. New pitcher will tell you about him in a second. Also have Layla, the Haitian ambassador, up with us. She's seven years old. She's from Fort Worth. Are you having a good time? You look like you're having a good time. I am. <laughs> Tonight we're leaving, and I'm happy that I got my blanket today so I can just open it up in the car and then I can put it on me. See, it's awesome. the simple things in life sometimes yeah. that make us all happy. So you got it's the blanket. Shriner's blanket, yep. Layla. That's good. Love it. Yep. Now, we saw a video of you on the scoreboard when you went to visit the Horned Frogs baseball team. How much fun was that? The best day of my life. Really? That good? <laughs> Yes. I, I saw you riding around with Coach Sarlus on the tractor, on the infield. I saw you playing with the guys and swinging the bat. What else did you get to do? So, back when I was in Fort Worth, like, is it that time? Are you talking about? Yeah. Well, I got to go to the batting cage a whole bunch, and I was throwing the balls and seeing how far I could reach them and stuff. <laughs> Sounds like a good time to me. This is Jack Payton pops up the first pitch. Oh, that was hard. And this is. So if, if, if that was me trying to catch that, I would. That wouldn't have worked. I had a broken hand. Right we now. don't want that. <laughs> no, we don't want that. I know you've gone through multiple surgeries, so Shriners has played a big role for you, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah, tell us, Layla, what they've done. How, how has Shriners mm -hmm. helped you? So, when I was two and a half, diagnosed with hip dysplasia and uh, I mean and with that I so one of my legs was longer than the other and one of them was shorter than the other so makes sense I, so now that it's the same length they took out my metal and now I have stitches and in like a couple weeks or like Soon they're gonna take out my stitches and they're gonna tell me to talk to my mom again. Oh, that's great. Hoover retires Ryan McCoy with a strikeout. So what grade are you in? Second grade? Third grade? First grade. First grade. I was advancing you a few years already. <laughs> okay. I'm about to be in second grade. About a semester. Are you gonna go back to your classmates on Monday and tell them about your big weekend in Houston? Mm, yeah. on, on, on because on, on Sunday because on Sunday I'm gonna go to Chuck E. Cheese and have oh my and cupcakes because when I, it was my birthday I I, I still had my stick okay. and my mom didn't like take me there she, just the day before she took me to Target and I got to pick out some toys. That's a liner to right that will end the inning. Layla, enjoy Chuck E. Cheese for us, will you? Yes. <laughs> and the Coast Cupcakes. Pat and I are jealous. Thanks for stopping my, by. My best friend and some other kids. <laughs> Great to see you, Layla. <laughs> with the opportunity to partner with Cosair Shriners as they brought a special guest, Haley, uh, to spend time with the coaches and the players. Uh, met a special girl who loves the game of baseball. Welcome, Haley. How are you? She was born six weeks premature. About six months into it is when we finally realized that everything wasn't developing quite along as it should be. I have cerebral palsy. I can't walk unassisted. I have to use a walker. They sent us to Shriners. She had her hip completely rebuilt and then had part of the femur cut off at the top so that that way it could all join back correctly. You know, I've had moments where you lose the perspective of playing for something bigger than yourself. Getting to meet Haley and just seeing a smile on her face and see how positive she is, it's very uplifting. Uh, she was telling us about how she is going to graduate and go on to become a veterinary technician. You know, those are the dreams that Shriners Children's helps to make possible. I'm proud to represent Shriners Hospitals for Children and the Louisville baseball team. Go Cards! Starter Greg Perrault has been in command and control. 
Now, what a story this is becoming for Dan McDonald and the Louisville Cardinals. Think about the losses they had to their pitching staff last season. That has been the big question mark for them coming into this 23 season. And Verona is answering the call in a big way. First collegiate start against the number 15th ranked team of the country. And he is doing nothing short of tossing a shutout at the moment. Started with strike one to Cole Fontenelle. 7 8 and 9 Go up for the Frogs. That's the sweeping breaking ball. Fontenelle wouldn't chase. He fly to center his only time in. There's the line for Verona. Yeah, outstanding. And again, uh, just that high strikeout to walk ratio and doing what he's done for most of his career. Now, how about this, Brett? You lose Michael Persecki, of course, all ACC last season, 11 saves. Gerald Poland, all ACC pitcher. And you're going to replace a lot of innings out of that Louisville staff. And Dan McDonald came into the season wondering where we're going to get uh, some guys to fit this rotation. And Verona's certainly stepping up. We talked about his strikeout numbers in the Juco ranks off the charts. That's seven against the Frogs. Yeah, it's a big break in curveball that has resulted in a number of those, but he's working his fastball in and out. I've seen a couple of strikeouts where he has challenged TC hitters inside once he's gotten up in the count. And that uh, 89 to 91 Monarch fastball is playing well today. Sure is. Luke Boyer is in. Bounce to third is only time to the plate back in the second. Hit well to center. Hawkins stops. Now turns and drifts in to make the play. Two outs. So updating. That's five. That's eight. That's 11 straight set down by Ferron. Yeah, that's uh, pretty unheard of against this TCU lineup. And it's not easy, but he's about as smooth as can be at this point. You love the mechanics. He's got very repeatable mechanics, which is difficult with that 6'6 six, six frame. Boy, he gets to the top of his slot, and that arm just whips through. There's some deceptiveness in there with the way that arm comes from behind his back over his head. So far, TCU hitters having a tough time picking it up. Carson Bowen, the batter. You can almost see from that angle where it kind of lulls you to sleep just a bit, and all of a sudden, then you get that snap. And then yeah. You know, when you see uh, a guy that tall, of course, it can be a little bit of intimidation factor with that arm angle, that arm slot, but yeah, he's really smooth, and all of a sudden he gets to the top, and there's that whip. And I'd be willing to bet those TC hitters are saying, hey, we're just having a tough time picking it up off his hand. <laughs> in the air to right for Humphrey. How about 12 in a row? Set down by Greg Ferrone. He's pitching in a rocking chair. Five innings complete. He's having a good time. So are the Cardinals up by three. Depending on who is on the offensive side of the ball, you've got to be ready for their first move, second move, third move, fourth move. So. Um, my whole thing is just to be as locked in and uh, focused to just, you know, make the adjustments needed to stop them from scoring. I try to just focus on, you know, what's going on in the game. So I'm um, going to focus on, you know, kind of where he's hot at, the spots he's trying to get to. It's really whatever time he's on, I respond with the same energy. There's so much more to the game that you have to be aware of, whether it's where is the next pass going to, where are you going to be a help side, um, if the guy he's passing it to is right-handed or left-handed. There's just so much things that have to go through your mind, and you only have a couple seconds to process it. Go beyond the court with Rockets All Access. Exclusive interviews, player features, and more. New episodes every Wednesday on AT&T Sportsnet. The Astros take on Venezuela Wednesday at 4.30 on AT&T Sportsnet. Nine of the ten hits in the game belong to the Cardinals wearing their Astros uniforms here at Minute Maid. Hey, your commemorative 2022 World Series.
can be done so with a customized brick. The World Champions Brick Program on sale now. Personalize your brick today at astros.com slash bricks. Pat, you need a brick. I need a brick. We'll see if we can get that taken care of. <laughs> Here's Isaac Humphrey. Astros fan growing up, I could uh, use, a, could brick. use a brick yeah. or two. Humphrey has one of those nine hits. He's facing Hoover, Patty snuck in and had a quick inning when uh, Layla was telling us about Chuck E. Cheese. We probably need to <laughs> update everybody on him pitching. Yeah, sure did. And this is one of those games you thought maybe Kirk Solos was going to divide it up between uh, Klecker and Hoover, and certainly Hoover making a bid to become a starter at some point. But he has drawn comparisons from his head coach to the great Tyler Alexander, of course, major league pitcher for the Tigers, and. You draw those type of comparisons as a freshman, that's a pretty hefty order. Well, Hoover's got four pitches, got a great mix, and really controls and commands all four well. So you can see with this left-hander from Santa Barbara, California, he's on a track to uh, possibly become part of that frog rotation in the near future. Brings those hands all the way behind his head and the pitch. Chopper that Richardson got a glove on. It's a base hit. 10th for Louisville. Two infielders arriving at just about the same place at the same time. Yeah, just perfectly in between both of them and did Humphrey. And yeah, I thought off the bat, Braden Taylor might be able to come up with this. He had been shading over towards the middle of the infield. And yeah, had Richardson been able to field that, he would have had no thrill on Humphrey. So again, Brett, Louisville doing what we basically saw last night, just finding holes and putting runners in position to create havoc on the base paths. You can see it'd be a frustrating day for TCU. For one, we've watched Ferron set down 12 frogs in a row very comfortably. Frustrating, comfortable offers for a lot of these frog hitters. And then just watching Louisville just continue to put men on base. Were it not for a caught stealing and a pickoff, they'd be looking at much more than a 3 nothing lead. Yeah, they just kind of chip, chip, chip away. And then get the big blast, of course, by Jack Payton in the third. And a double to lead off the inning by Beard in the fourth. Those are the only two. Extra base hits out of the 10 they've got on the scoreboard. Pitch to Beard. Guns down and out. He's trying to get his three hit game. Maybe a little bit of a slow start for Beard this season. Had a big home run against Xavier earlier this year. Ten three ten a year ago. Trying to use off speed against Beard. He's shown he can hit the fastball. This is with a breaking ball and changeup, and now Beard with an advantage count. See if McDonald will put Humphrey in motion. And that's ball four. So a single, and then the walk to Beard, who has a beard. Now there's a couple of guys on base for the Cardinals, and they can really try and. Add a runner to this frame against TCU. Yeah, I kind of believe Keelan will be bunting here. And now Kirk Solos out of the dugout. I think he wants to set his defense. Got no activity going in this bullpen. The Astros bullpen in right center. Well, as I say that, maybe a few bodies begin to get up and stretch them out, but it's fairly quiet for the time being. Yeah, I think this is, uh, has much more to do with strategy and how do we want to play this? Hey, there's a fundraising goal up to 20%. I want you to participate, try and help us uh, get to that goal. We're at 20%, $35,000 currently. Go to collegeclassic.org, get yourself a bat, make a pledge, help out Shriners Children's. See if we can keep pushing that blue dot, that line a little further to the right. Well, great cause. You've heard some great testimonials from Lee Schreiner's patients. And gosh, Brett, we've been doing this a long time. It never gets old. No, it <laughs> I mean, the, everybody's just so happy. And you think about the people that have been challenged in life in any number of ways. And oftentimes their outlook and their disposition is so much better than us that have been blessed. Oh, my goodness. Yep. That's why I always love coming back to this. That is uh, always the highlight for me. I love watching college baseball and but, uh, hearing those stories. Keelan shows bunt, but the pitch missed from Hoover. Keelan has an infield single, a bunt base hit. 
He's drawn the attention of Fontenelle at third base. Well, TCU has David Bishop back behind the bag at first, so if he does punt, it's all on the pitcher to make the play here. You can see Hoover jumping off towards third base. Typically, that's where you're trying to bunt. With men on first and second. McDonald's going to use a timeout here to talk to Keelan. But you've got third baseman Fontenelle up on the grass. Now, he's kind of straddling the grass and the dirt because... Uh, you think he's talking about Pat just trying to, to drag that button a little bit towards the first base side? Well, I, that's uh, that's a good clue there, Brett, because with Bishop playing back, I think that was one of the things you look at. You know, typically, you go to third base with that bunt, but now TC is going to draw Bishop up on the grass, so maybe they've changed their bunt defense alignment. Did they have? Yeah, I was shocked to see Bishop back behind the bag. I was, too. Bunt attempt again. A good one this time. Fontenelle's throw goes to first. It's late. Richardson couldn't get there in time. Yeah, Richardson's got to cheat on that play. If it, uh, you've got Bishop pulled up, he's crashing when the pitch is made. And uh, Richardson had just stood his ground at second base for way too long. And we saw Fontenelle had to hold that ball and then try to flip it quickly, but too late, so Keelan will earn the base hit. He's three for three, and he hasn't hit the ball out of the infield, but he'll take it. Don't look a three for three day in the mouth, but here's Hawkins. Infield in. Hawkins takes. It's an important strike one for Hoover. Boy, TCU has been so good defensively today, and really taking away a couple of runs that Louisville should have on the board, and now they're going to pull their infield in. Hoover gets the big rip and miss. Helmet almost popped right off the head of Hawkins. Yeah, Hawkins not following the protocol of most Cardinal hitters. <laughs> He's swinging out of his shoes. You see the Cardinal hitters really cut down their swings and just put the ball in play, making contact, but not for Hawkins. He's trying to lift. Count stays, nothing in two. Hawkins has been on the program a while, and one of those seniors getting the start today. Got that uh, Gary Sheffield approach with those hands above his head. He certainly does. Yep. That one's in. Yep. Dan McDonald's hoping he can hit like Sheffield. His hands are above the helmet. Chopper towards third. Fontenelle's going to come home. That's an out. Brought by Bowen. And there's one gone. Yeah, clean play that time. Fontenelle pulled up the third base. Gets the easy two hopper in. Nice throw to Bowen, but would not be able to get the speedy Hawkins going to first, so he'll settle for the fielder's choice. And now that Corn Frogs will move their infield, middle infield, back a few steps. Back line is a nine-hole hit. We had two events all season and no hits, and yet he hit a ball that was caught against the fence in left and also doubled in the fourth to the gap in left center. He's had two really good at-bats. Good eye. Tough breaking ball to hang off. So the way TC wants to play this, if the ball's hit sharply and they can turn two up the middle, they'll do that. If it's not hit sharp enough, of course, they'll try to cut the run off at the plate. One one. Just missed outside. That's it, did. Big pitch in the sequence. Now two balls and a strike to Klein. Lead off hitter Napchik waiting on deck. Cardinals looking to add to this 3-0 lead in the sixth. Up the middle and through. There was a collision at second base. Taylor got locked up with Keelan. Well, you're saying Keelan's being ball. called out. Yeah. Keelan is out on the interference. Keelan was upset that he was tripped or felt like he was tripped by... Taylor initially 
Kirk Sarlos came out of the dugout, and he's pointing at, of course, the runner who interfered with his infielder. Now, the irony is he's not going to get to that ball, his yeah. tail. That's right. And it's, uh, it becomes a judgment call. Where do the runners advance? And now Seth Buckminster, the second base umpire, immediately signaled that there was an out because of interference. And now the runners will have to return. So that runs right. off the board. It comes off the board. Yeah, really unfortunate play, but yeah, that's totally on the base runner. The base runner has to provide a path for the defensive player to make the play. And he did not do that. You can see that Taylor just gets tripped up. How about Klein? You think you've got a base hit and two runs batted in, and instead it's going to be a fielder's choice. The run comes off the board. Yeah, incredibly unfortunate situation for Dan McDonald and the Cardinals because that's easily a, a run, and that's I think that's the argument he's going to make. If this is a judgment call on where runners should be placed, why don't we get the run? I don't think this is going to be a short conversation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those situations where just a heads-up play by Braden Taylor, because you're exactly right, Brett. There was no play on that ball. So if I'm Taylor, I'm looking, well, may maybe we can get the interference here if I can cross paths with the base runner at second base, which was Logan Beard, and McDonald loses that argument. I mean, this could be a 7 or 8 to nothing game already. And the frustrations on the bases, and that probably tops the cake with the pickoff and the punt stealing. You feel bad for Klein. He thinks he's got a base hit in the middle of RBIs. Man. Yeah, the Cardinals have left now at least three runners off the board. And now the, the score resorts back to three to nothing. And now there's two outs. Here's Napchik. Cardinals would breathe a little bit easier if Napchik delivers a two-run single or more. He's one for three in the game, but he's had a couple of ground outs to first. I will say the Cardinals have been involved in the most bizarre sequences in this. <laughs> That's right. College Classic with that eight-run fifth inning yesterday. Yeah, that was Keelan at second base. I think Keelan was the one that was called out on yes. the interference. So Beard returned to third. Hawkins moved up. Pop up. And the Frogs are going to get out. We almost had a collision. Another one. For the second time in the inning, we had a runner with Louisville make contact with the Frogs, but the catch was made anyhow. Yeah, great concentration by Fontenelle, but how about that crazy inning? No runs for the Cardinals. Should have had at least two. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing race with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing race with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. This is Morgan. They never really thought about their credit scores until they had eight roommates. Well, that's crowded. So Morgan used Credit Karma to help them improve their scores and started saving for a down payment. Then they moved back in with their original roommates until they could afford their own place. Thanks, Mom. That's how Morgan got pre-qualified for the perfect home with the perfect little roommate to match. Credit Karma. Download the free money app where your hard work pays off. The 2023 Shriners Children's College Classic is presented by Shriners Children's. Go to collegeclassic.org to donate today. And by Frio Beer, American-owned, American brewed. And by more. Your mission is our purpose. Downtown Houston, group open, of course, at Minute Maid. 
shining some light on the bizarro inning right there for the Louisville <laughs> Cardinals. Man, I, Brett, you and I have watched a lot of baseball. I don't know that I've ever seen two obstruction calls in, in one inning. But yeah, that was a crazy set of events, and it, it really cost the Louisville Cardinals because this game could easily be 6 7 nothing at this point. There's no doubt. And it's just wild to think had that pop-up drop, we would have had another obstruction. Elijah Nunez leads off. Of course, runners obstruct, fielders interfere. Runners don't interfere. That's right. Nunez, by the way, has the one Frogs hit, which came leading off the bottom of the first. Roller to short. Napchik's got it. Flips to first. 13 in a row. Set down by Ferron. Well, the fact that he's just been counting the strike zone and, and it uh, really allows your fielders to make that those plays. And they're uh, in the game, on their toes, ready to make plays. And, and Napchik had to get rid of it quickly to get the speedy Nunez and did not have much time on that throw. Ray Taylor's over for two. Going back to that play where Taylor collided with Keelan. You think at all Taylor's maybe leaning in, hoping to get that call? I think he was. I mean, I, you got to know that the ball off the bat. You know if you've got a play or not, or you got a chance at a play. That ball was clearly up the middle. Braden Taylor, there's no way he's going to get to it. So, hey, why not try to create the obstruction call? And I think he did that. Really smart heads up play. It's a pitch down and out. I mean, you can make a pretty good argument. I know the rules, and you do too, that you can call the obstruction and still let the run score because <laughs> with one out, even if there's a play, yeah. I, I guess your thought is, is that Taylor has a chance to maybe get a double play, but in that situation, he did not. No, there's no way. Then I, I know the rule states in obstruction calls that the runners have to return right. to the bases from which they came. And so, yeah, run comes off the board, and Louisville had what looked like a, a breakout inning forming. End up with nothing. Smoked off the screen beyond the Frogs' dugout. I mean, when you've out-hit a team 11 to 1, you think your lead might be more than 3 nothing. Yeah. And for all practical purposes, it probably should be. Yeah, that's where TCU's got to feel <laughs> like, man, we're not only winning this game, but, uh, you know, fortunate with all these turns of events that they got a little chance to win this game. How about that pick by Keelan at second base? 14 strikes set down. Yeah, it's felt like all Louisville to this point. Of course, a 3 nothing lead. But, yeah, I think if you're the Horn Frogs, you're feeling really good about this point in the game that you still get a ch shot at it when it should be way out of reach. How about that view? Does that ever get tiresome? Oh, man. What a beautiful ballpark. And I love the fact that the Astros chose to open the roof and let us play with this, uh, these beautiful conditions that have been created here in Houston. Austin Davis lifting one to left back into the corner, and that ball is caught. Caught. <laughs> I tell you what, Ferone's living well. That was just enough room for Benson to make that catch. Another perfect inning. Oh, I need new wipers. Hmm. RockAuto.com. That was easy. That was fast. Today we're here at TCU to introduce one of our Shriners patients, Layla, to the TCU baseball program. I bet you'll be a good coach. Thanks, Layla. When she was about two and a half, she was diagnosed with hip dysplasia. Her hip socket was not formed all the way. So they had to take bone out of her femur to build her socket to hold it in place. Not everyone had to go through this, but I had to go through a lot of surgeries and scans to get my legs to be the same length. And now that it's the same, they're like really good with each other. They needed to do my last surgery and take out all of the hardware that was in the top of my femur. Hey, Layla's gonna show you what we're gonna do next. You know, this is the first time we were able to meet Layla and she's a joy to be around. When you have someone that comes in with her outlook on life, it, it puts some perspective into the game that we get to play. She walked in the door, like jumping, having fun, just gave all of us a jolt of energy. 
They were like really nice and it was really, really fun. Trust me, all of you out there that are watching about that day. It's like one of my favorite days. <laughs> It's 3 nothing Cardinals as we go to the seventh. Speaking of Louisville, Chris Williams, the Chief Communications Officer for Cosair for Kids, joins us. I trust you're having a good time here this Having weekend. a great time, guys. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for having us with Cosair for Kids in the booth. This is kind of like a dream for all of us, especially our kids, Ollie and Lola and Henry, who threw out the first pitch no tonight. Barry joined time. us last night, told us a little bit about Cosair for Kids, but I want to give you the platform to do it again because we do have different viewers at different times. But uh, tell us what you guys are all about. Well, we're an organization that's based out of Louisville, Kentucky, but we impact children across Kentucky, when all 120 counties in southern Indiana. We provide help for medical uh, bills for families and equipment, as well as uh, resources, education. We also fight child abuse and neglect across Kentucky. It's a ground ball to third, off the bat of Peyton Homer earlier. New first baseman Green, the play then on the bounce, and that's the first down. And sorry, I almost started talking over their play. Uh, kind of free. exciting Jump to want right to be a part in. of this and keep on part of these cards, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Mack had us down at the field earlier today. We've been watching batting practice with our Cozier kids the last couple of days. And it's been fantastic to watch these, these young men really take to our kids, the Cozier kids, uh, who, you know, they play in the Miracle League in Louisville. And it's a wonderful organization. And it's just been so much fun to see these ball players rally around these kids. That, that's the best part every year, isn't it? Oh, man. It Absolutely. Is. We talk about that all the time, Chris. And, you know, it's a joy for us to be here, too, and see those type, same scenes. But mm -hmm. talk about Coach Sarah. You guys have had a long-term relationship with Shriners, haven't you? We have. It's such a wonderful relationship with Shriners Hospitals. Uh, we have been an organization for 100 years. We do a lot of funding for them. So we get a hot shot at the first baseman. That was a great play by TCU for the second out of the year. You sounded pretty good. Sorry, John. <laughs> I like that. That's Back to my lead. broadcast yeah, group. There you go, man. Uh, but we, we, you know, we have had a wonderful organization with Shriners Children's Hospitals. And while we help them, they help us. We all have the same mission, and that is to help children live life to the fullest, no matter what difficulties they face. And we can't say enough for the, the relationship we've had and the good we've been able to do for a century now. Two outs for JT Benson. Chris Williams joining us up in the booth. And is this a weekend where you can just kind of celebrate with some of your patients here, too? <laughs> it is. Um, these children, you know, we don't handle the health care itself, but mm -hmm. if a family cannot afford their medical bills or their equipment, we help them with that. We have a wonderful organization that is tied to Cosair for Kids in Louisville, all outside on the batter here. And <laughs> <laughs> what they do is with the, um, the Neuro Recovery Center at UofL, we are getting children through Dr. Berman's organization that we help fund at Cosair for Kids. And they're getting kids with spinal cord injuries mm. the chance to walk, use their limbs, live a full life. And it's uh, it's just so wonderful to see these kids to just be a small part of their lives. Yeah, incredible, Chris. Ball high. Well, besides seeing the kids interact with the players, what's uh, been the favorite part of your weekend so far? Well, outside of this, yeah. uh, hanging out with the two of you <laughs> and getting a chance to yeah, the booth, <laughs> it's been fantastic. But seeing the looks on the family's faces and yeah. seeing how things are working out in ball four and... We're going to get a runner on for the cards. Um, by the way, Coach Mack told us this team is really good, and people of Louisville are very excited about this team. Sure. Uh, Colin Lyman, who is uh, basically a volunteer coach for them, he is uh, with FCA, and he's yeah. the chaplain for the team. We are talking before the game, because uh, he is on our advisory council with Coaster for Kids. Oh, great. And he said there's at least three players on this team that will have a good chance of going in the draft this year. Yeah, that's tremendous. Yeah, we're seeing it. Certainly uh, some hot, a lot of talent in this offensive lineup, and... I think you're right. If Coach Mack gets some pitching, they've got, got kind of fill in some holes in the rotation. But if they get that to come through, this could be a powerful team. Right. We saw that pickoff move there. I saw that pickoff move. Is it the second inning? You guys have the notes. I don't. But that was a nasty pickoff move yeah. by TCU. The Cards don't need any more runners picked off with this three run. No, game. they've had enough of that, I think, for today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the thing about this weekend that's been really tremendous for us at, at Coast here for kids is those people who have supported us, many of them for generations of families have supported us. Uh, a lot of them go to coastair.org and donate, or they go to many of the different uh, events that we have. Pick that strike on the inside of the plate. Um, they, they have come to us, and they have said, we want children to have experiences. They want to experience the power of joy. And that's one of the things that we concentrate on at yeah. Coastair for Kids. Yeah. And, and that's what the Shriners do a great job, too. With they these do. Events. They do. And that's something that this brotherhood has had in common for 100 years. Another pickoff move over there. 
Thank goodness the cards are getting back. <laughs> it sound like a homer to the folks watching this across <laughs> across the interwebs. Well, you're giving cable. it away. You know, you're from Louisville. You got the red on here. You're, right. That's okay. But, but seeing the power of joy that can be spread to a child, and, and joy breeds confidence. Pulls in the air to left field. Boyers will have a play to end the inning. Chris, thanks for what you do. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Guys, thanks for all the support for Coast Here for Kids, and thanks for letting me hang out with you for an inning. You want my job, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Great talk. Being the new face of Don't Mess with Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. I love when they come down to the wire and we finish them out. I feel like not only is the team uh, together and, 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 and united, but also just the whole building. Oh, another one! And look who's right back in this ball game! I'm gonna say, yeah, once that ball goes to the net and everyone gets loud, it's like a big adrenaline rush. I can't even describe it. You can get chills if you feel it. It's just, it's, it's electric. It's electric. The modern fan deserves modern solutions. No, not interdimensional teleportation, although that would be cool. I'm talking about watching your favorite teams everywhere, wherever you go. Make it happen with the AT&T Sportsnet mobile app and never miss a moment. Just download from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and it's go time. The AT&T Sportsnet mobile app, literally putting the game in your hands. And we'll look into that teleportation thing. Pitch first inning was exhausting because he certainly simplified it from that point on. <laughs> Talk about settling in. Yeah, that's uh, typically what you see with a big time pitcher like Ferone. And boy, after that first, he has really settled in. Yeah, how about uh, 12 of 20 first pitch strikes make it 13 of 21 now. Only four three ball counts on the afternoon. And he has made it really difficult on these Horn Frog hitters. Burn Richardson and Bishop, four, five, and six. Fifteen in a row have been set down by Ferron. Only one hit given up by Ferron. That's it, one hit. And that was the leadoff hitter of the game. He's found back and out of play. You know, we saw really some crazy numbers this weekend around college baseball. We've had this to this point, it was certainly a well-pitched game. How about LSU scoring 26 runs today, 26 to four over Central Connecticut. Washington scored 32 yesterday against Northern wow. Colorado in one game. That's on the corner, strike three called. So eight strikeouts now for Greg Ferrone. Well, doesn't this look effortless? I mean, you mentioned yes. it last inning. You know, Brett just pitching out of a rocking chair. I mean, just so smooth and effortless. Yet, uh, now just over the 80 pitch mark. Seems like he could uh, have a chance to complete this game if McDonald chose to go that far, although still early in the season in his first start collegiately. What a gem. Now he's throwing more innings today than he has in the two previous weeks in relief with five and a third. Obviously, there was intent with that in his role. Now Richardson's hit the ball hard twice, but doesn't have anything to show for him. Hit a bullet that was caught by Keelan with a leaping grab at second. Back in the fourth. This ball is tagged towards the gap, but Hawkins loses his cap and runs down the baseball. That's three times today. Richardson has squared one up, but is 0 for 3. Yeah, having an outstanding afternoon, but nothing to show for it for Trey Richardson. The great job by... Hawkins to get a good jump on the ball. That ball looked like it had a chance to die in and makes the adjustment on the run. How about that? 6-6 left-hander from Schenectady, New York. Greg Ferrone. This is Brody Green. He's been in the game at first base. This is uh, given a 
all these junior college D3 guys hope that, hey, look what this guy's doing. We know he was spectacular last season for Herkimer College. He should be banded of the week for that. <laughs> Juco banded of the week at Man. the D1 level? There's no doubt. And, you know, you always wonder how will it translate to the next level, but you see the amazing command he has. And they will throw those breaking pitches, especially behind in the count. This guy can pitch backwards and... And throw off speed stuff behind it just man, just so difficult for hitters to, to try to guess a wave and a miss they missed this up earlier with the throw to first not now 18 straight batters set down by greg ferrone what a performance by the louisville left-hander moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros Spring Ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Moving into the eighth inning. Louisville in front of TCU. A score of 3 nothing. They gear up for the 2023 season at the Astros team store. Shop the latest hats, shirts, jerseys, and commemorative items, including world champions gear today. Visit astros.com slash team store for store hours and information. This is Logan Beard leading off the eighth inning. He has singled, he has doubled, he has walked, but he has not scored. Louisville got two runs on a homer from Peyton in the third inning. They got a run when Bowen dropped a throw at the plate that would have had Keelan. But there's a lot of what a coulda, shoulda. So yeah, far sure in this is. <laughs> yeah, and eight men left on base by the Cardinal offense today. And as we mentioned, Brett, uh, you know, three nothing score could easily be much more than that. But uh, the Cardinals definitely looking for some insurance. Never enough runs against this TCU lineup. Yeah, I would agree. And even though Ferone has retired 18 in a row, you get the feeling that that's still seven ups and seven downs, regardless of the fact that he's been in command. At some point, he's not going to be able to finish this one. That's right. Yeah, 84 pitches for Ferone. So you got to be thinking, if you're Coach Mack, you know, how much longer do you let him go? But what really hasn't been a lot of high stress pitches either. So then you see him back at, at least for the eighth. Well, Chase Hoover doing a great job in relief of Cole Klecker. He has been spotless here for a few innings. Sure has. That one is going to provide a long run. Davis has good speed. He'll get there and make the catch. He had retired for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, nice running catch by Davis. Had to come a long way. Playing pretty deep there in right field to get to that line. That's easy for Davis. <laughs> Can of corn. And Keelan hasn't hit the ball out of the infield, but he's three for three. A bunt hit. Tried to sacrifice, but got a bunt hit his last time in. And an infield base hit. He heard me. That's a liner to right, but it hangs up for Davis. Wow. It wouldn't drop. And he's finally retired. 
Yeah, outstanding game for Keelan offensively and making a bid for his fourth hit of the game. Just hung up a little too long. Hit it too well. Yeah, I think you made the comment. He had gotten one at, into the outfield, and <laughs> that time he did. He did. Didn't get rewarded. He'd rather go back to the bunny <laughs> and get a base hit. Hawkins was at the plate with the bases loaded and nobody out. Back in the sixth. Hit a ground ball to third. There was a force at the plate. Cardinals would not score that inning. And it looked like they were going to get a couple at least. That was pitch number 50 for Hoover in relief. Again, he came on back in the fifth after four innings from Clacker, who gave up the three runs, one of which was not earned. Good hold by Hawkins there. pop-up playable in foul territory green now drifting back across the chalk and made the catch that could have been trouble cardinals go down in order frogs have six outs left with which to work watch me watch me paddle carve and drop in the water is my canvas let the good times begin perfect sets and barrels i chase where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. Childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. The reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. This is Morgan. They never really thought about their credit scores until they had eight roommates. Well, that's crowded. So Morgan used Credit Karma to help them improve their scores and started saving for a down payment. Then they moved back in with their original roommates until they could afford their own place. Thanks, Mom. That's how Morgan got pre-qualified for the perfect home with the perfect little roommate to match. Credit Karma. Download the free money app where your hard work pays off. Steam moving into the bottom of the eighth inning. Frogs have some work to do. One more game to follow tonight. Rice and Texas A&M. We shoot for 7 p.m. depending on when this game finishes. But there's a few Aggie fans already getting the best uh, choice of seats before their team plays this evening. Yeah, should be a good crowd tonight. Of course, uh, Houston base for Rice. And then a lot of Aggie fans in the Houston area. Indeed. They had a basketball game early this morning, so uh, no excuses. They even knew the daily double. I know they played Alabama. Did you get a score in that game? I've got scores in every direction. I've got to figure <laughs> out which one's which. Let's go find now. That. Yeah, the uh, conference tournament's getting ready to fire up here in college basketball. And That's that month. Yep, we've yep. reached the madness portion of this calendar. We are there. And the College baseball conference season just a couple of weeks away. You believe that already? Hard hit in the center for a base hit. Fontenelle has just the second hit of the day for TCU. Yeah, big time to get it here in the bottom of the eighth inning. TCU needs base runners, and Fontenelle does a good job. Gets a fastball middle away. This goes right back up the middle. Solid approach there from Fontenelle. And Dan McDonald out of the dugout. This may be the night for Ferone. <laughs> TCU fans are cheering the fact that after setting down 18 straight, they get a base hit and maybe getting him out of the game. 
Well, if it is indeed the night, what a night it has been for Greg Farone. First collegiate start at the D1 level. Talk about a line. Man. We'll step aside. What a performance by Greg Farone. Louisville fans showing their appreciation. Ready? So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia. Green light. I mean, all the time. Red light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. here you're either lunch or you're enjoying it the all-powerful kia suvs assembled in georgia kia movement that inspires what a game for greg ferone one i'm sure he won't soon forget retired 18 straight tcu horn frogs before that single nine strikeouts to the two walks those two walks came in the very first inning yeah, it's uh, almost a near-perfect performance after that first inning against this really elite hitting team in TCU. And you won't be able to say enough superlatives about the outing by Greg Ferrone. He'll give way to Tate Keener. Pitching change is brought to you by Honda. Keener from Marshalltown, Iowa. Heard in just one game, Pat, this season. Well, he has been a veteran pitcher on this pitching staff entering his fourth season for the Cardinals really counted on in high leverage situations but uh, last year's you know, split time between the rotation and the bullpen this time getting counted on out of the pen big time situation for him and the Cardinals facing Luke Boyers so for two getting to the bottom of the lineup here in the bottom of the eighth one more base runner though the Frogs bring the tying run to the plate Yeah, Keener making his second appearance. Had one perfect inning against Eastern Kentucky back on February 28th. Wasn't available for a couple of weeks. He pitched for a strike last year, though. 20 appearances, two starts. ERA in the mid threes. Butch Max said there was a little bit of funk in this delivery, but it isn't crazy. It isn't out of control. But now, uh, just that low three-quarter slot. Yeah. A little deceptiveness with the slot, the sinking fastball. It's going to be out of play. We'll mix in a slider. That upper 70s range. It really has showed the ability to pass to miss bats with that fastball slider combination. Breaking ball is one of those uh, high spin rate breaking balls. It's a really tight spin. Typically hard to pick up out of his hand. Almost got Boyers with sure it. Sure did. Fontenelle not going anywhere. Just a very short lead. Yeah, Coach Max says Keener is one of those guys that's 
Very situational type pitcher. You can bring him in to close. Has had some starts previous years, but just one of those guys he really trusts in these high leverage situations. We've seen some relievers really get behind the eight ball early in their appearances. A couple of base runners and all the thing, all of a sudden things start snowballing. Found back here in the second level. Well, boy, you're battling well. It's a great matchup against a better player, Luke Boyers. Came to TCU, immediately jumped into that starting lineup, but has never left it. Pretty good battle going on. And it will continue. Yeah, that would have been ball four. Check swing. Just caught a piece. Mike Keener challenging him with those low 90s fastballs. Another 3-2. My goodness. What a battle. The fifth foul ball in a row for Boyers. Nine pitch at bat. And the advantage typically starts to tip to the hitter. Once you've seen some spin, you, you see the velocity. And a greater chance of throwing a ball here. Well, that was the 10th, on to the 11th in this sequence. And Cardinal defense playing double play depth up the middle. They've got Boyers shaded a little bit towards left, left side of the infield. Another 3-2. Humphrey chasing. This is... Easily in play and caught. So Boyers had a lengthy at bat. Keener wins the battle. Yeah, tremendous battle between those two and huge first out here in the eighth. Of course, Cole Fontenelle still at first base. And yeah, Keener just kept pumping strikes. Sure did. I was with you. I thought sometime that momentum would swing to Boyers with all those foul balls, but uh, not meant to be. Here's Bowen, the catcher, batting ninth. Keener would like to get a ground ball, turn that double play, and send this to the ninth. Just missed inside. Louisville scored a run in the fourth to make it 3-0. That's the last time we've had a run in this game. You know, the worst thing a Keener could do here is walk Bowen. I was going to say, he's done nothing but throw strikes. Now yeah. he can't throw one to the nine-hole hit. Don't want to bring the tie run to the plate, but Bowen helped TCU win last week against Dallas Baptist in the 12th inning. And a walk-off hit in that game. That was one of those the Frogs were happy to get. Man. Never an easy midweek win here in Texas. There is not. 12-inning game, though, coming off. Losing two out of three to Florida State. Nice way to get a W. Lifted in the air. Left center field. Well struck. That ball is gone. He hit above the yellow line. That's going to be a two-run homer for Carson Bowen. Yep. And the Frogs right back into this game. It's a one-run contest. One swing of the bat. How about that? Carson Bowen with a bomb to left center. That ball hit off the pillow. Right next to the Crawford Bach sign in left center. Yeah, the question was, did it get over the, the line? I thought it did. I thought it hit the 
the cement pillar in left. Take a look at it here. You can see the ball entering your picture, and it looks like it hit well above sure, that yeah. yellow line. So it's part of the uh, the quirks here in this ballpark. Yep. They're going to review it anyway, but uh, I think that was a no doubter. That ball was probably 20 feet above the yellow line in left center. And just like that, Carson Bowen had the big hit to win a ball game for the Frogs last week, and now does it again here. Still, the Frogs are run down in this game, but. They have closed the gap. Just about everything has gone right for Louisville, with the exception of bringing their arms out of the bullpen. That is not. Well, Keener got behind Bowen, and then full count just used to fastball belt high. And Bowen got every piece of that. Won't take long. They're seeing what we saw. Ball should be confirmed. Yeah. Third base umpire Michael Durantis had a good angle on it. He was running out towards the outfield and he keep clear of the sod come off that facade in left center. Yeah, he got it right. The problem was he was pointing. He yeah. wasn't doing the whole thing. That's right. Yeah. Like he was pointing at it. Yeah. Well, it's a 3 2 game. Still only one out. <laughs> Looks like Louisville's going to stick with Keener at the moment. And got these three left-handers in a row, so they'll play matchups here against TCU with their left-hander Keener. So TCU had just one hit all game until this inning. They've had a single and a two-run homer. This man, Nunez, had the bunt hit to begin the bottom of the first. Is that a swing? It is. It is indeed. Michael Banks doesn't need the appeal. Nothing in two. Kenneth bounces that up there. About a 53 foot slider. And the dude just in the very back of that box. As far back as he can get. And right on top of the plate. Passed another. You know Nunez would love to get on with this speed. He's right back in the count, two and two, and that's the pitch to get him out with the slider, but he's un unable to locate it. Wave and a miss. Nasty pitch. Strike three. He comes back with that sinking fastball in. Boy, had him set up for it too. And Gone away, 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 and gets it underneath his hands. You're not expecting that ball in that spot when you start your swing. Nope. 91 miles an hour down and in. Next pitch from Keener to Taylor. In there for a strike. He skipped a few in the direction of Klein, his catch. Yeah. Klein's uh, getting a little beat up back there, but I think he's okay with it as long as uh, Kinger can get out. See Klein shading his uh, watch to get the sign. Yeah, he's not sure what's coming. So he's going to check the watch, Pat. Why would he then flash the signal to the pitcher from that point? Yeah, I want, he's probably trying to make sure Keener has the same call because they may have gotten crossed up once or twice. And I just wonder if one of them's uh, unable to see the pitch. I'd be below average if you can't see the yeah. advice. <laughs> What's coming? I don't know. Just throw it up there. I'll right. catch it. <laughs> he's shading his uh, left wrist yeah. to get that sign, but previously he'd actually flashed a sign. He's not going to do it here. He has a battery died or what? Picked up by Keener. Slings one to first. They get the out. Nice play. Play. Yep. Two run over from Bowen tightens up this game. Cardinals by a run going to the ninth.
I don't know if I could have played with these guys, but at the time I thought I could have. But I, I tell you, I, I just admire them so much. They're very athletic, and uh, I'd like to take some of them on the baseball field because I think some of them could play baseball. In your experience, what's the key to leading a young team? Uh, my experience is that you got to let them play, but you got to also teach them discipline at the same time. And, uh, you know, love is discipline. And, uh, you, you know, you can't wait too long to, 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 try to, to try to help them and teach them. And, uh, you know, my son was excited about seeing this game because he thinks they have uh, the most, some of the most young, best young talent in the league. Yeah. And so uh, I'm excited about seeing them. And I met some of them at the stadium. You know, I see them throwing out the first pitch. And, I'm <laughs> hey, uh, I asked my son, hey, where do you go to school? Or who's he? Or who's this guy? So, you know, I'm hoping they make good showing. Tonight. Well, Dusty, enjoy the game. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much. And hello to Houston. Catch Astros spring training action on AT&T Sportsnet. Here's your game summary between the Cardinals and the Frogs. This was Jack Payton, third inning, opposite field, two-run homer. Started the scoring. For a while, it looked like that might be all the Cardinals would need. This was a crazy play, though. Klein hit a ball to the gap. Watch Keelan. It looks like he's going to be out. The ball kicked out of the glove of Bowen, but then Bowen... Gets TCU on the board with a two-run homer in the bottom of the eighth. Entering that inning, they had just one single. Now it's a one-run game as we go to the ninth. Got a Honda pitching change. Then Abelt comes on a pitch. Yeah, Abelt. They're going to spit the pair to the season, and he has been outstanding out of the bullpen for TCU. But that uh, had a crossfire delivery, a lot of deception. But the high ERA really resulted just one bad outing against Florida State. Gave up six runs in two innings, but outside of that, he has been good. Fastball sits low 90s and has a sweeping slider. Kenny, Texas product. He's going to look at Klein, the Napchick, and Peyton. 9-1-2 and two in the ninth. That's a little bit in. Decline. This guy has a strange game. Hit a liner to the fence with a couple of runners on in the second. He's out. Double to the gap in the fourth. The run scores, but he didn't get the RBI because the air was given to Bowen for dropping the relay. Then, looks like he has a two-run single with the bases loaded in the sixth. That comes off the board. No RBIs, no hit because of an obstruction with the base runner, Keelan. Is that enough? <laughs> yeah, you could run a book on the Matt Klein's at bats tonight. Each chapter for uh, a lot each of his at bats. One two is a chopper towards Richardson. That's a shoulder high bounce and a strong throw. Retires Klein for the first down. Hey, you watch that step across the body that Ben Abel has with his delivery. You can only imagine what a left hander feels like. That ball's going to be coming from behind him as it comes through that ankle. He mounts the rubber on the far left side and he has that step across. It is not comfortable if you're a left handed hitter to face Abel. Well, the angle isn't, but there's some violence as well thrown across that body. Yeah. And it's uh, typically don't see guys throwing low to mid 90s with that type of a release. And that crossfire action, but uh, that's exactly what Abel can bring. That that's one, it. 93. And just a spectator on that one. Yeah, it's just some funk that you don't see often as a hitter. Cardinals have been looking for some insurance since the fourth inning. Haven't found any. They've outed TCU 11 to 3. Their lead is down to a run. That's on the corner for a called strike two and two. And that catches the outside corner. Patrick not so sure yeah, about it. But I think he's saying it's that as far as it's going to go. Yeah. Soft flare. Base hit. He's just doing what uh, Christian Napchuk has been known to do. Get on base again. Another yeah. two-hit game. 
Well, I think you described it well last night, but he's a pest in the, in the best of ways, right? It's just like, you know, if you're a pitcher, you've made really two great pitches against him, and then he just does that to you. Well, there's the Jack Payton home run back in the third inning. Napchik sets the table, and Payton usually delivers. It's fourth home run of the year for Payton. Team's 14th. I don't know if he's going to get to Dalton Rushing's number from last year, 23, but he's going to be putting up a big-time home run tally, I believe, when all is said and done. You can drive a ball out the other way that far. You'll hit a few to the pull side, too. Yeah, no doubt. But I think what has made it a better situation for Peyton this season is McDonald going out and picking up Ryan McCoy. And McCoy's out adds a lot of punch as well. It provides a little bit of protection for Peyton. Cardinals have had some adventures on the bases today. I'm not sure if they're willing to roll the dice one more time or whether they've uh, had enough. The analytics and the computers have been beeping and smoking and kicking out some data after losing some base runners. Yeah, at some point, you kind of wave the flag and say, let's do it the more traditional way, right? Hope for a bloop and a blast. So Napchik provided the bloop. Wondering if Peyton can get another blast. They dealt with throw over the first with a sidearm flip in that direction, too. So he's got the same interesting angle on his tosses to his teammate. Well, he's awfully concerned with Napchik with a very dangerous hitter in the box. Yeah. Well, a one-two count, typically a pretty good count to run on if you if you guess a breaking ball. Trying to hold him close at first. Adolph's pitch, Peyton found it directly back to the screen. Another slider, he got away with that one. That ball was kind of hanging up in the zone. Chopper in the left to base hit. Fontenelle was over near the line, could not get to his left, and that's another base hit for Peyton. Yeah, Fontenelle's playing no doubles at third base, and you called it right, Brett. He was really hugging that third base line. If he's playing normal depth, normal position, he makes that play, but the ball sneaks in the left field, and yet another hit for Jack Peyton. They give McCoy the shot. Three-hole hitter Ryan McCoy singled in four bats. Louisville has ten more hits than TCU with just one more run. That's pretty incredible. You don't often see that in baseball. So back-to-back -back singles. Abel trying to retire this lefty. Fouls one right back to the ribbon board. Good pitch. Called strike two. Yeah, fastball at 91 at the knees. That's the man of the hour, Greg Ferone. He's hoping to hold on to that win. Indeed he is. That's the one question remaining for him and the team. Two, two to McCoy. Winner of this game is 2-0 and so far in the Shriners Children's College Classic. That one nearly took a couple of Cardinals out in the dugout. <laughs> and the on-deck hitter was like, hey, I'm on your team. <laughs> kind of an emergency swing there by McCoy. Keeps the at-bat alive.
the 2-2. Yeah. Well, maybe that was going to hit the corner. Yeah. Carson Bowen tried to pull back in. Did not get the call. Cardinals looking for some runs in the ninth inning. Up by one. Soft foul ball landing on the warning track and bouncing into the Louisville dugout. Yeah, with two strikes, you try to tell yourself, you know, stay back as long as you can. Don't get fooled on the breaking pitch. And you got an A-belt throwing those 92, 93 mile hour fastballs at you. Can't stay back that long. Got a piece again. Yeah, great job of hanging in there. McCoy spoils a really good slider down on the zone. Little dribbler to third. We're going to have another runner incident? Another obstruction? <laughs> we do not. Fontenelle makes the play. Two obstructions is about enough for oh, a month, man. let alone one game. Oh, Didn't need a third. Things do travel in threes, but now both runners move up. Oh, like Gapchick was trying to cause a little bit of distraction running by third baseman Fontenelle. Got two outs in the inning now. See if Abel can pitch out of this jam. They're going to go ahead and put Benson on with the free pass, provide a force at every base. And of course you do this because there's another lefty on deck. And Isaac Humphrey. Playing the percentages. Now Humphrey ironically is two for four and Benson was 0 for three, but you like this left on left matchup? Yeah. Definitely playing the matchup at this stage of the game. And I like A-belt against any lefty. I would agree. Starts with strike one. Cardinals have stranded eight runners already. Three more men out there. Napchik breaking down the line at third, trying to get his presence noted. Fouled away, nothing in two. Two singles and a walk to load the bases here in the ninth. Two strikes on Humphrey. And that pitch bends down and out. A nice O2 pitch. That's exactly where you want to throw that breaking ball. Start that pitch middle in or down the middle. Let it break off the plate. See if he goes right back to it. I think it would surprise me. See where the target is set. Here's the pitch. Oh. The Cardinals strand the bases loaded. See if that provides some momentum for the Frogs. Need two to win. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down. Most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. 
pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Well, the Frogs hoping they can find two runs for a win, despite the fact they've been on hit 13 to three. Part of the lineup, Davis, Byrne, and Richardson. Frogs have done everything possible to keep any more runs on the board after Louisville built that three nothing lead. Carson Bowen had the two run homer last inning to tighten this up. Here's Davis who's 0 for 2. Homered yesterday. He's going to try and bump. That's hard on the ground. They need to pick it up, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I don't out. know what McCoy was doing. <laughs> as long as Davis is in front of him, pick it up. Yeah, that could have been an easy out. So it goes out as a foul ball. Well, if the Cardinals don't hold on to this lead, Brett, they're going to look back and think, man, obviously the 13 hits, but 11 base runners left on base. That's just too many. It certainly is. And, uh, we've had multiple opportunities to put this game away. And that's one thing that they'll uh, we'll be talking about. Caught stealing, a pickoff in addition to those men left on base. Yeah, some poor base running early on, for sure. Outside from Keener. After the home run, Keener, Mateo Nunez, and Taylor. That's down two and one. Well, Davis should get something good to hit next pitch or two. Certainly can't afford to walk him. Three straight at missed after he tried to bunt. Did Davis to begin the sitting. Wow. My goodness, he just cannot do that. Keener. Yeah, it sets up all kinds of options here for Elijah Nunez and the Horn Frogs, but uh, yeah, That's just missed high and away. Yeah, both times didn't make the adjustment. Frogs get what they need. That's the tying run at first base. Considering how difficult it has been to score outside of that homer, do you play for a run rather than two? Well, I, I think with Nunez, because he's that speed is so good. I mean, I, I think you butt him here, let him try to butt for a base hit. I mean, worst case scenario, you know, you get Davis at second base with the meteor lineup coming up. Looks like they're looking to swing away. They did. Yep. Ernest struck at us last two times in. Seven hits, six runs batted in. Keener's next pitch. Ground ball to short. A bobble that a flip to second with the catcher running. They're still able to get a wow. double play. How about that? How about that? McCoy had a bit of a tumble at the end, lost his glasses, but held on. We had a hard slide at second base by Austin Davis. What a transition from Gavin Keelan at second base. Watched a quick flip. Yeah, he just sidestepped the bag and great job of. <laughs> McCoy holding his ground there at first base. It was a jackknife right here. Yeah. Down for the count. Now they're going to review this. I think they're going to review that McCoy's foot hold the bat. You can see some movement there after he caught it. But I think at the point of contact, when that ball hits his glove, his foot was on the bag. It just popped off afterwards. I don't think he had any other place to go. Yeah. He was almost locked up. Well, instead of bunting Bird, one frogs roll the dice and let him swing away. Yeah, that was your fear, right? I mean, you yeah. do let him swing away, and then fans are seeing this replay on the big board. And at least from the angle we're seeing, I don't think you could possibly overrule it. But, not uh, from that angle. I yeah, mean, you, you know, you think that toes on the base. If it's not, we can't see that it uh, came off. Yeah, even the high home plate angle is going to be tough as well. It's like a quick potential conversation. I mean, Doug Williams is right on top of that. He can definitely see over... McCoy because McCoy had to go down for that delivery from Keelan. So he had a clear view of the bag, and I think it's going to be hard to overrule that. Yep, he's out. Double play. So it's up to Trey Richardson, who has hit the ball hard three times. Nothing to show for it. Lined out to center his last time in. 
The play said ahead and all the way. Well, Richardson has some pretty good pop as well. He has seen the ball good. I mean, 0 for 3, but he has seen the ball well three times in three at-bats. So the Frogs begin this process of getting runners on again. Richardson is not homer this year. See what he can do. Big swing and a chopper fouled outside of third base. He just kind of jumped at that ball. Frogs down to their final out. Brown ball up the middle. Napchik can't get there, and the Frogs still don't have life. Now that double play looms even larger. Oh, man. Yeah, I think if Napchik comes up with it, it'd be hard-pressed to throw Richardson out at first base. He had to go about seven or eight steps to his left. And... Oh, it's just buying by the time you went yeah. into that dive. Richardson finally gets rewarded. Another hard-hit ball. Well... Now Bishop represents the winning run, and he's got some power. And Brody Green in there. Struck out back in the seventh. And that was the 18th straight hitter that Ferrone had set down. Pitch misses. Upstairs to Brody Green. Yeah, that's right. They made the defensive move a couple of innings ago. Frog's not going quietly in this ninth. That's fouled outside of third base. You can see Beard on top of that chalk again. With Richardson's speed, a ball to the gap would have a great chance to tie up the game. Cole Fontenelle on deck if this game continues. You know, Brody Green's first career hit for the Frogs at the collegiate level was a home run. That was back at Kansas. They have 22, so obviously a ton of power. Crawford boxes are an inviting target. That pitch Back down. Oh, hit it. Back foot. There have been times from a pitching standpoint when you can least afford to see a base runner or to hit a batter. It's when you yeah. hit a batter. Yep. Now tie the run. tying run goes to second base. And yeah, just wrap that slider right into the back foot of Green. Well, he'll take it. Fontenelle homered yesterday, and it was from the right side. He singled in the eighth inning and then scored in the home run from Bowen. Benson extremely deep in left, so it's that case as well where a base hit would almost certainly tie up the game if it goes to left, but you also don't want to see Green score from first if you are the Cardinals. Yeah. I think Roger Williams out of the dugout, of course, the pitching coach for the Cards in his 17th season. This was the first pitch that Fontenelle saw in the game. Came on to pinch hit, played innings. It went into the Crawford boxes. Yeah, that's seven rows up. That was a no-doubter. Yeah, they do it again. I wonder if this meeting on the mound is discussed strategy. Are they going to stick with Keener? There is a right-hander warming up for Louisville. They are going to stick with him. So that was definitely a strategy session. How do we want to approach Fontenelle? Three of the four batters he's faced this inning have reached. For Keener's sake and the Cardinals' sake, they got the double play off the bat of Burn. But... Fontenelle being called over towards the dugout. T.J. Bruce having a quick conversation with Cole Fontenelle. 
That might be Delora. Yeah. Here's John Delora. No, you're right. That was T.J. Bruce. Yeah. Now Delora coaching third base. Frogs down to their final out. Extra base hit, though, could win the game. Wow, big swing. Keener comes set right above his belt. And a pitch in the air to right. Back goes Humphrey, nearing the wall. He's got it. Wow. <laughs> and the Cardinals hang on for a 3-2 win. Well, Fontanelle gave it a run. Man, he ran at first base, thought he had it. Could have been as far as you go without hitting it out. That ball kept carrying it, too. It did. Isaac Humphrey reels it in, and the Cardinals will walk away with this 3-2 victory over the TCU Horn Frogs. What a game. Pat, not to be lost, the pitching performance by Greg Furlow. Outstanding. Well, Dan McDonald was looking for that starter. I think he just found one. There's no doubt Greg Ferrone with an outstanding outing today and put the